Hey folks, in this video we are going to be revisiting the Bard class and the Cleric class. I say revisiting because a lot has changed for these classes in Patch 9 with the addition of Level 5. And I discussed these classes in previous patches, but because so much has changed, I want to make this video to update my thoughts on the class in light of these changes. So my previous videos are still good. They cover level 1 through 4 really well, but this video is just basically to cover level 5 and some small changes that have been made just with the particulars of this patch. There's some bugs and stuff like that, and, um, and the way it interacts with class features from other classes that all change. So we're doing that for the Bard and the Cleric, not the Druid. I promised in my last video we'd cover the Druid as well, but in the end I decided the Druid needs his own video. So just Bard and Cleric for this one. We're going to start with the Bard. Let's dive into it. So here's the Bard at level 5. It's gaining three features at this level. First is the standard level 3 spells, because Bards are full casters. Both classes we're covering in this video are full casters, so they're going to be getting level 3 spells. This is a massive change. Level 3 spells are probably the biggest change in this patch, so we're going to be talking about some of those. But besides that, they also gain Font of Inspiration and Improved Bardic Inspiration. Both of these are modifying the core class feature, Bardic Inspiration, but we're going to discuss these after level 3 spells. So let's talk about level 3 spells now. You can see all of these spells with the Roman numeral 3 are the new ones added to the game that the Bard gets access to. Now just as a recap, if you watched my last Bard video, one of the things that made the Bard class S tier was its amazing spell selection. It got all of the best hits in previous patches. Spells like Sleep, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Cloud of Daggers, Hold Person, Healing Word, amazing spells. Pretty much all of the S tier meta-defining spells in the game. But that has not carried over to its level 3 spell selection. It's The spells that it gets access to here, we can't discuss all of them, but the gist of it is, is that it gets all of the really good control spells, and that's it. So, some of these we talked about in our last video, covering the Arcane Casters. Fear, Glyph of Warding, Hypnotic Pattern. I consider these the big three control spells in this patch. Definitely favoring Fear and Glyph of Warding. Hypnotic Pattern is a little bit worse, but still good. So, I typically cast Fear whenever I can use it to proc attacks of opportunity and I have my concentration available and for all other situations I'm casting Glyph of Warding for sleep. Glyph of Warding is also a pretty good AoE damage spell so it can flex into AoE damage which is pretty nice. Bards also get Bestow Curse. We haven't talked about this spell yet so we can discuss it now. Bestow Curse is like Glyph of Warding in that it's actually a few spells combined into one. Well, really like three spells combined into one. What you do is, no matter which effect you choose for it, it's always a single target save or suck control spell that targets the Wisdom saving throw and requires your concentration. So you're going to pick a target and then you're going to pick an effect. And the effects can be one of three things. First. It can give disadvantage on a saving throw of your choice. But of course, you're almost always going to pick Wisdom. It's going to be Wisdom pretty much every time. That's the only saving throw that's really worth debilitating because all of the potent debuffs in this game target the Wisdom saving throw. So you can give them disadvantage on a saving throw. The second effect is Bestow Curse additional damage. This one is interesting. Basically, it is like an improved hex effect. So if the target fails their saving throw for 10 turns or as long as you maintain concentration, your attacks will deal an additional 1 die 8 necrotic damage. So that's compared to hexes 1 die 6. But actually, hex is much, a much better spell, even at level 1, because while it does less damage, 1 die 6 instead of 1 die 8, there's no saving throw involved. It lasts forever, and it gives disadvantage on ability checks, and Bestow Curse isn't doing any of that. So, why would you use a level 3 spell slot to get the effect of a first level spell, Hex? You basically shouldn't, 
bestow curse additional damage usually is not worth the cast but maybe there are some builds where you can get a lot of attacks in a round for example if you have scorching ray or something like that where bestow curse might be useful maybe on a light cleric for example that gets scorching ray and bestow curse but none of that is really relevant for the bard so yeah bestow curse additional damage probably not worth casting the really good use of bestow curse is bestow curse dread so if the target fails in this version if the target fails its wisdom saving throw they gain the dread condition for one turn what dread does is it just cancels their turn on their turn they're not allowed to take actions they're not allowed to take bonus actions they cannot move they do nothing they just stand there <clears throat> so canceling turns is pretty good and it lasts 10 turns but it's not really canceling 10 turns what happens is at the beginning of their turn your cursed targets turn they're going to roll a wisdom save and if they fail they won't be able to do anything and if they succeed they'll be able to act as normal but that is still pretty good the use of this is to target basically really powerful units like boss fights and you want to target bosses with low wisdom save so the obvious candidate here is the bule the bule is a really tanky kind of mini boss that you can fight that had low wisdom saves but it was hard to target it because it was immune to the really debilitating wisdom save targeting effects like tasha's hideous laughter its intelligence was too low also um hold person because it's not a person it's a bule there wasn't a really good way to ex exploit its low save but now there is with bestow curse dread you can hit it with a dread and it's going to lose turns you're getting a lot of value out of that because the value of a turn on a bule is really high it does a lot on its turn so canceling that incredible and that's what bestow curse is for anytime you have a really powerful single unit with a low wisdom save you can hit them with a bestow curse dread and start canceling turns so overall that version of bestow curse is pretty good but you can flex into some other options if you can find an angle for them bards also get plant growth we'll probably save this to talk about in depth when we get to the druid i think kind of it's a good movement controlling effect a really good movement controlling effect but in a meta where movement controlling effects are more likely to harm you than they are to hurt you so pro usually not worth casting and that's pretty much it it's just control spells maybe a little bit of damage out of damage cast of glyph of warding and upcasting your level two spells that's what you get on the bard so kind of a disappointment to be honest compared to its first level spell selection and second level spell selection the third one is leaves a lot to be desired notice missing from this list are the really s tier spells the standout one of course is haste i talk about it in all of my revisited videos because in my opinion haste completely defines the meta of this patch it is an insane insanely efficient support ability and bards a support class don't get it and that really really sucks but also counterspell is not on this list um so yeah no real s tier spells just the solid control spells okay so that's enough about third level spells now let's talk about bardic inspiration so they get two new features that are improving bardic inspiration first off is the bardic inspiration dice goes up from a one die six to a one die eight that's a difference uh, on an average roll that's a difference of it going up from a 3.5 to a 4.5 so you should see it as roughly a 33 percent increase in the value of your bardic inspiration that's a big increase 33 is a lot on top of that they gain font of inspiration which allows them to refresh bardic inspiration dice on short rest now as well as long rests and this is so so good <laughs> bards are just cracked now because the whole the whole niche of a bard in this game is using potent abilities that refresh on a short rest and that might surprise you if you've only played tabletop dungeons and dragons but the way layering has implemented this class in particular their song of rest feature uh, song of rest gives you another short rest per long rest and you're usually capped at two 
So with a bard in your party, you're getting three. You're moving from two to three. That's a 50% increase in the uh, amount of short rest refreshing abilities you can cast. So the whole niche of the bard, the, the way you played it was to put it in party compositions where you could spam a lot of really potent abilities that refresh on a short rest. And the two obvious candidates are the Battlemaster Fighter with its superiority die, and of course, the Warlock. The Warlock spells refresh on a short rest. But now, we are going to be adding the Bard to that list because their inspiration die are refreshing on a short rest. So, it's amazing. Besides all of that, in this patch, we have a reaction system. So let's talk about that really quick. Reactions have greatly improved your use of Bardic Inspiration. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Uh, so if you go to your inventory, up here is Reactions. Click on that. And you can see it allows you to manage your reactions. With my Battlemaster here, I've got Repost activated, and it asks me every opportunity that I can repost and I always turn on ask for everything because I just like the options. But what it allows you to do with inspiration dice is actually select the effect that you want from your dice in the situation that you want it. In this run I am playing a College of Valor bard so whenever I use bardic inspiration on a target they can use it apply that dice either to an attack roll, an AC roll, or a damage roll. And most of the time what I'm doing with this is, I would say about 80% of the time, I'm using it for attack rolls on my strikers that have Great Weapon Master. Because a 1 die 8 is pretty much offsetting, it, you know, you round 4.5 rounds up to 5, that's completely offsetting at least one attack of that negative you get from Great Weapon Master. So, that is my most frequent use of it. Sometimes I do use it for damage. I use it for damage when I am attacking a target where I get a guaranteed crit, so a target that's paralyzed, laughing, asleep, you get the idea, we've talked about this many times. The reason I do it then is because it will double the damage dice, so that average roll of 4.5 becomes an average of 9 damage whenever you crit, that's a lot, that's adding a lot of damage, so especially when you realize that we're spamming these, right? We're using them pretty much every opportunity we can get because they're refreshing on a short rest now. If you watched my previous Bard video, which you should, I talked about the College of Lore Bard, and one of its big problems was that its special feature with Bardic Inspiration Dice, cutting words, really kind of needed reaction to work effectively. And now we have a reaction that allows that. So I would say that the College of Valor and College of Lore are pretty on par. It's just whatever, whichever one you prefer. I definitely still prefer the College of Valor because I like the medium armor and shield proficiency. But with cut it, cutting words is useful. So if you prefer the College of Lore, by all means, play it. So, okay, that covers third level spells. Bardic Inspiration Ice, I think that is it for the Bard. Now we just need to talk about its general ranking. In the past, I gave the Bard an S tier, and they have improved a lot with level 5. I mean, they're getting third level spells, they're getting better Inspiration Dice, their Inspiration Dice is refreshing on a short rest now. How they should stay S tier, right? Well, I actually think not. and. It's disappointing to me, and I'm sure it's disappointing to you, but I'm giving the Bard an A tier in this patch, and it's really just because it's not a balanced patch, and it is hard to justify bringing a support class that can't cast haste. That's really what it comes down to for me. That said, the classes that I've given S tier so far are classes that function well around haste. It's the Paladin, the Barbarian, and the Sorcerer. Those three classes synergize so well, they form the core of what I consider the best party composition in this patch. But there's kind of an off-meta party composition with a lot of classes that I've given A-tier that I really consider high A-tier, and the Bard is one of them. 
It's the Bard, the Warlock, and the Battlemaster. Like we've just said, these are these are classes that synergize well together because of the use of short rest refreshing abilities that are really powerful. I've given them all A tier, um, but together they could probably deserve an S. So, and you could see the Bard is really the glue that ties them together. So for that reason, if you consider the Bard an S tier, I'm really fine with that. I kind of go back and forth on it, but in the end I've decided I want to make a distinction between, let's say, haste abusers and non-haste abusers in this patch. So for that reason, I'm giving the Bard an A tier. Alright, that's the Bard, now let's talk about the Cleric. Okay, now on to the Cleric. Got Shadowheart here. At level 5, Clerics receive two features. The first is level 3 spells, and that's the main feature you're going to get, so we'll talk about that in a second. And the second is Destroy Undead. This is a feature that improves your Turn Undead Channel Divinity, so that it now on top of everything else, deals 4 die 6 radiant damage, I believe half as much if the targets make their save. I, I say believe because I haven't tested this, and the reason I haven't tested it is I never get it at a point where there are undead fights to actually <laughs> deal with in early access. In early access there are two fights against undead. There is the skeletons in the ruined temple, and there's the skeletons under the apothecary in the blighted village. Both of those fights are very easy, and they're very early in the game, so I'm usually dealing with them around levels 2 to 3. Definitely not saving them for level 5, that would be a complete waste of time. So that means by the time you get this feature, there are not any undead to use it against, unless you really want to pick a fight against the Mykonid quality, maybe? They have some undead thralls. Getting 4 die 6 radiant damage on turn undead is really, really good against undead, but Right now we can just set it aside because there's no real use for it. This is going to be a big feature on full release of the game, I'm sure. Because guaranteed we're going to see some high level undead to fight, perhaps even an undead boss. It's kind of a staple in fantasy games like this. But for now, it's not really worth thinking about. The main thing we need to talk about is the Cleric's level 3 spells. I'll talk about some of the main ones here, starting with Spirit Guardians. So, Spirit Guardians is an AoE damage and control aura. The fact that it's an aura is pretty good. So, for 3 meters, or that's 10 feet if you use feet, around you, you have an aura, and enemies that begin their turn in that aura must make a Wisdom saving throw. If they fail their Wisdom saving throw, they will take 3 at A8 Radiant damage or Necrotic damage you choose, and their movement speed is half. If they succeed on their saving throw, they take half that damage and they don't lose any movement speed. This lasts for 10 rounds or until you drop Concentration. It is a Concentration spell. So this is an S tier spell 100%. And that may be a surprise to you because as a control spell, it's kind of meh for a level 3 spell slot. And the damage is pretty low, but here's what makes it so good is first that it's an aura, and that means you can move that AoE around very easily on your turn to hit the targets that you need to hit. And secondly, it's damage that you're getting on your concentration that is completely independent of anything else in your build or that you do on your turn. Effectively, this is weaponizing your concentration slot, and it is the best, the highest, most efficient way to weaponize your concentration slot in the game so far, so it has to be S tier. Round over round, this will deal about, according to my assumptions in the game, which is around a 60 to 65% chance of enemies failing their saving throw, this will average around 11 damage per turn per target, but it's very easy to get targets in it, so often you're getting two or more in your AoE. If you really want to average this out, I think you can expect to deal around 16 to 17 damage per turn that you are concentrating on this spell. And that's a lot. That's adding a lot of DPS, and it kind of turns clerics into a pinch hitter DPR striker whenever you cast the spell. And they always had decent striking options with spells like Inflict Wounds, spells like Guiding Bolt, Clerics could do damage if they are willing to spend the, 
the spell slots on it. And now with Spirit Guardians too, you're just adding on top of that. And it's really a shame we don't have Sacred Weapon yet, but I'm sure in full release we'll have that as well. What spells like Spirit Guardians do for the Cleric is they're just able to deal consistent damage while still building tanky. So for example, using a shield. You don't need to go Great Weapon Master to deal damage with Spirit Guardians. The only thing it's really costing is your concentration slot, which for a Cleric is pretty valuable because in the past we're using that concentration slot on Bless. But you can kind of offset Bless onto Paladin characters if you have them on your party, or you can just choose. Spirit Guardians is a third level spell, you're not going to be using it every fight, so for the lesser fights you can still bless, or the fights where you are hasting a Great Weapon Master Striker, you can use bless because those are the fights where you're going to get the most efficiency, and then for everything else you can use Spear Guardians. So it kind of creates two modes for the Cleric in my opinion. There's the kind of Crusader mode where you're on the front lines dealing damage and having enemy movement, and then there's the support Martyr Cleric mode where you're casting bless and mostly standing back. So Spirit Guardians, S tier all the way. Such a phenomenal spell and it's going to get even better once we have full release of the game. Next up to talk about is Mass Healing Word. So this is pretty much what it says on the tin. It's Healing Word except in a burst AoE around you hitting all allies in that area and it is a wide area. It's an 18 meter radius. That's uh, that's a lot. I think it's 60 feet, if I'm remembering right. It's a lot. So you can expect to hit every ally in the fight with this ability. And you're healing them for 1 to 4 plus your wisdom modifier. Now, Healing Word, the level 1 version of the spell, is an easy S tier spell. And this is the mass version of it. So shouldn't it also be S tier? I mean, it really <laughs> it really depends. In my written work on my website, I compared Healing Word to the healing that you get in games like Darkest Dungeon, where you want to heal targets on Death's Door. And the fact that it's on a bonus action and at range really allows you to do that efficiently. That's what makes it S tier. Mass Healing Word, if you kind of keep that metaphor, is a little bit like the Darkest Dungeon Vestal class's Divine Comfort ability in that it is a AoE heal that allows you to bring more than one target off of Death's Door on a bonus action. And when you're doing that with it, it's probably the most efficient action in the game. But in my opinion, there's just no reason to be at a point where you have two targets on Death's Door. And I would much rather spend my third level spell slot casting a spell which keeps them from dying, then heals them whenever they're rolling saves. So, uh, yeah, Mass Healing Word can be really good. Right now, not much of a use for it. But I think it's an interesting spell, that's why I bring it up to talk about. Last one we're going to talk about is Anime Dead. This one is super fun. <laughs> it summons either a skeleton or a zombie when you cast it on a corpse. It's your choice. You can summon a zombie or a skeleton. The skeleton is kind of a better attacker and it has a bow so that's nice you can keep him on the back lines and just deal consistent chip damage with him but the much better summon by far is the zombie which is slightly tankier but importantly it has an ability where whenever it hits targets with, with its melee attack it inflicts them with a status condition where if that target dies and has that status condition it will resurrect a lesser zombie from their corpse for free. So when you summon a zombie, you are able to create more zombies and things can really just go nuclear from there because those zombies have the power to create other zombies and so on and so on and so on. More zombies equals more zombies. Now, the problem is with this spell is you're not able, let's say in a fight you're able to create four zombies. You don't get those four zombies for the next fight. Only the first zombie that you summon really stays with you for the entire long rest adventure. Because the other ones have, I called them lesser zombies, and really they're identical except 
that they take damage every round. It's just one damage, so it's really not changing their tankiness that much. But it does mean they will eventually just die if you're wanting to extend their duration from fight to fight. So you can really only count on them for that one fight. Except for your original main parent zombie. You get that one until the next long rest. And there's no concentration save. You just get them. Summons, of course, can be really, really good in this game because of just the action economy of 5e. Lots of small rounds can overbear and outperform a few really powerful turns. So a summon that can create more summons, which can create more summons, has the potential to be extremely strong. With that said, I'm not finding Animate Dead to really have a niche. It's super fun to play with, for sure. I love that part of it. But um, there's probably better spells that you can cast. But anyways, I just want to talk about it also because, again, it's interesting. Now, besides all of these spells, it's getting some important control spells like Glyph of Warding, Bestow Curse. They're also getting Revivify. Revivify is a raise dead, so if targets die, you can bring them back from the dead. Really important in the old Baldur's Gate games, but honestly, I... I barely even see it as a spell it's just like a, a spell slot tax on recovery and at this point in the game fights are not that difficult you pretty much never need to cast it and besides you the ideal is always to cast spells which prevent targets from dying rather than casting spells that raise them from the dead after they die so that's the cleric's level 3 spell list but we still have to talk about the bonus spells that you get from your domain so you can see here shadow heart is a trickery cleric and at level 5, she's gaining Bestow Curse and Fear as bonus spells from her domain. That's pretty good, actually. Both of these are decent control spells, and Fear is one that clerics would not otherwise get, so awesome. If you are interested, I haven't played level 5 with all these classes, but the Life Cleric gains Revivify and Beacon of Hope. Both of these spells are ones I pretty much never cast and never see myself casting. So that's kind of a bummer for the Life Cleric. The Light Cleric gains Daylight, again a spell you probably will never cast, and Fireball. Fireball is a spell I've talked about. I find that it's kind of overrated. People are begging me to give it S tier, but uh, it's probably somewhere around a B to an A tier. You know what, let's just say A tier. Because it does a lot of AoE damage, and a lot of AoE damage is just always useful. And that's what A tier means in my tier system, always useful. And of course, Fireball is a spell that clerics wouldn't otherwise get, so getting them on a Light Cleric is really good. And there's kind of an added bonus to it, where spells like Fireball, ones that do AoE burst damage... They are really good, in my opinion, when you are able to cast them and kill multiple enemies in an AoE before they have time to act. One of the problems with the Fireball is, while its damage is good, it's not good enough that you're really, you can reliably kill multiple targets in an AoE. And that's good, because if it was, did do that much damage, it'd be way too strong. However, uh, if you have multiple members of your party that can cast it, it almost gets a little better than if you just have one because you can cast one to soften them up and then the other to start actually killing targets. And having it on a cleric who wouldn't otherwise get it and who you want in your party anyways and who's doing things on the front line of combat, it's not just a, uh, a a caster in the back line that's not absorbing damage. It can be, that can be really good. So Light Cleric is still the standout cleric for me. It's a phenomenal class for its support and striking abilities with Fireball, Scorching Ray, Spirit Guardians, Inflict Wounds, and then of course it's really overpower Channel Divinity. It's just awesome. But that is the Light Domain Cleric. What about the Cleric in general? Just like the Bard, I am demoting clerics from S tier to A tier, and the reason is kind of the same. They're still primarily a support class. They're a support class that just doesn't get haste, and right now I'm kind of reserving S tier on this patch for the haste abusing classes. That said, a light cleric in particular is a really, really potent class. You can It can find its niche on a lot of team compositions, so definitely 
A tier class. Don't sleep on it. And in a more balanced version of the game, I'm sure Cleric will be finding its place in S tier again. So that's it for this one. We've covered the Bard and the Cleric. In my next and last revisited video, I will be covering the Druid, so stay tuned for that. I'll catch you next time.